Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics, and as many of you know, we have quite a few cichlids in our fish room. One of our favorite tanks is the Ambuna cichlid tank that we have on the other side of the fish room, so I wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about Ambuna cichlids. They're a very rewarding fish, but they can be a little bit challenging and not always for the beginner, but I wanted to give you some of our tips on how we're successful keeping them and encourage you, if you've got success keeping Ambuna cichlids, leave that in the comments section below. Again, this is a great place for all of us to come and learn, so stay tuned. All right, so as we look at this 75-gallon Embuna tank, there's a lot of things that stick out. And I think the first thing when we look at these fish and why they are desirable to many is the colors. And so we've got lots of different colors here. We've got yellow, we've got orange, we've got different types of blue. And it's just something that I think catches the eye of a lot of people. So that's certainly an advantage. And the other thing I think a lot of people like about the Imbuna cichlids is simply their personality. Uh, they just seem to recognize when someone's in the room. They get super excited when it's time to eat. They interact in an interesting way with one another. And so those are certainly some things that would be attractive to fish keepers, both new and experienced. So when we're talking about keeping Imbuna cichlids successfully, tank size is really important. And we've done some videos on surface area. I would highly recommend taking a look at those and we'll put a, either a video card up here in the upper right hand corner or I will have a link in the description. But surface area is important. Uh, we have kept breeding groups of Pseudotrophia solosi in a 40 gallon breeder without any issues. Uh, you know, some people have kept these cichlids in 55s. I would say for me, this is a 75 gallon that you're looking at. I don't think I would go much smaller than that uh, just because of the number of fish that I like to keep in the community. All right, so how did we set up this particular tank? Uh, you can see here we have quite a few fish and I like to buy not just my Ambunas, but a lot of my cichlids as either uh, very young juveniles, certainly young fish, small fish. And we did that here with the Ambunas. We got fish that were about an inch or so uh, in size and allowed them to kind of naturally work things out as they got older. So I think that is certainly something that can lead to a fair amount of success. We do buy multiple individuals for each species. Many people would recommend not buying them in pairs because that may create some aggression issues. There have been times where we've kept pairs of fish, whether it's two females or even two males in a tank, and that really depends on the species of Imbuna. Now you can see here, you know, you can see four or five yellow labs. We've got four or five Kenii. Uh, that's the, the females are blue and the males are kind of more of a yellow color. We have about four or five uh, Pseudotrophias ACI, but then we only have a couple Johannes, and that's so far been working out okay. We have just a few red zebras, and that again has been working out fine. We've got some Metroclima elongatus, that is the blue fish with the darker blue stripes in the left hand side right there. And again, it really depends on the type of fish in terms of the number of fish you keep for each species, but you're probably gonna have more success if you really love, let's say, yellow labs and red zebras. If you've got at least a half a dozen of each, that will certainly spread out aggression should it arise. If you don't wanna do that, then it may be best just to have one of each type of fish, especially if you're not interested in breeding. One of the things that we do when we're adding fish to an existing community, as you see here, uh, we've added fish after the originals have grown larger and you know some of these smaller yellow labs that you see and then we've got a couple of relatively small blue dolphins. There's one right there uh, in the bottom of the tank. And what we do typically to maximize the success of adding the new fish is we add them very small. And you know, you, wisdom, conventional wisdom may say, okay, well, if you're adding these fish really small, they're going to get killed by the larger fish. I have found with a lot of the cichlids, at least the African cichlids that we keep, whether they're peacocks or haps or uh, imbuna cichlids, they the adults tend to leave the smaller fish alone for the most part. Now, obviously, if they're small enough to be eaten, that may very well happen. But these smaller fish here, they don't necessarily see them as a threat, and so they tend to leave them alone. Uh, and so we've had success doing that, but the one thing I would say is if you're going to be adding fish to an existing Embuna community, have a backup plan. Have a tank ready here. You're looking at our Pseudotrophia solosi tank. This is a species-only tank. 
but have a tank ready. And I can give you a perfect example of this. When we added those smaller yellow labs and we added a, the blue dolphins, I also added a full-grown rusty cichlid. And it was a, it's a gorgeous fish, and it was... Uh, it, they just beat it up and within a few hours it was up in a corner and had I left it there they would have killed it now again they left all the other fish alone but I had a backup plan I had a tank in place in case something happened I could remove some fish and that's what we did and he's been a great inhabitant of the other tank so the biggest piece of advice I can give you if you're going to keep him bonus for the first time or you're going to be adding fish to an existing community it's really important to have some kind of a backup whether that's a, a backup tank or you know being okay with bringing them back to the fish store if they don't work out uh, that is certainly something to consider now i will say these fish are are really not for beginners they have interesting personalities and just because some embunas get along well there are certain embunas i i won't keep so for instance the erratus cichlid i just find far too aggressive and every time i've kept it they really beat down my other embunas uh, demace and i would be another one where i just i don't want to deal with the issues and so as you gain experience you begin to learn what cichlids will go together and again this is just trying to get us off on the right start uh, i do tend to overcrowd my community tanks now here we're looking at four males and two females conventional wisdom would say this isn't going to work you don't see any fin nipping you don't see any fish in a corner they grew up together and the males have kind of worked out worked out their hierarchies since the beginning uh, but in the community tanks we really try to uh, overcrowd those tanks and so that 75 gallon that you saw earlier we may have 25 or 27 fish in that tank uh, just to cut down on any one fish getting beat up. So in terms of the hardscaping, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Uh, one, a substrate, I really do like sand for Imbuna cichlids, and really for most of my cichlids. Uh, it's just, it's more natural. They dig through it. They will form breeding pits in the, in the sand, and there are quite a few uh, breeding groups in this tank, believe it or not. And the other thing is rock work, and there's really two main camps. One says, okay, put lots of rock work in the tank, provide lots of territory for males, break up lines, uh, lines of sight. The other camp is provide minimal structure so that no fish really has a territory to claim on their own, and that will minimize aggression. You can see here we do have a large central structure because I like the way it looks. And quite frankly, we haven't had any issues. We've got a couple of dominant males in this tank. One of them is the uh, yellow Kenny eye you just saw kind of chase fish away on the right-hand side. In the back, there is a red zebra, and that's kind of his area. And over time, these fish have kind of worked out their own area. Uh, so we haven't had a lot of aggression issues that way, doing it the way we've done it. Now, again, I do have to say with the Imbuna cichlids, really do your homework here. Just because I've had success doing things a certain way doesn't mean that you're going to be able to replicate that success. Doesn't mean that you should be discounting people who do it a different way as long as they, too, are having success. So, you know, it's one of these things. Every community is going to be different. It's There's a lot of different variables that go into keeping these fish successful. It could be the way the way that you add the fish. It could be when you add the fish, how old they are, uh, the structures that are in place. So a lot of different things can happen here. So again, rock work, this is what we have. Water temperature, we're right around 78 for our embunas. Uh, we have relatively hard water. Uh, pH is consistently right around a pH of 8, something that they enjoy. So most of the fish, or all the fish in here, uh, typically enjoy those parameters. Again, the good filtration is necessary. We've got the two sponge filters, and we've got the hang-on-the-back filter. Both of those are necessary for such a heavy load. Now, the other thing I would say is diet is also a very important aspect of keeping these fish successfully. Uh, we do not feed them a lot of protein. In nature, they are constantly grazing off rock services, eating algae, and so we feed a lot of cichlid flake. We will feed some new life spectrum pellets from time to time, frozen brine shrimp. Uh, we will feed them algae wafers with a high spirulina content, but we definitely stay away from blood worms. We stay away from foods high in protein. Uh, that will lead uh, sometimes to bloat, and we've had really good success with the, with the staples that we've been feeding them in terms of the flakes and the pellets. And so we're really not interested in trying to fatten them up too much with high protein diet. 
So if I were to summarize, again, what we've done to be successful, large tank, again, for us, minimum of a 75 gallon for a community and Buna tank, minimum of a 40 gallon breeder for us uh, when it comes to a breeding group, uh, overcrowding here, again, we've got well over 20 fish in this tank, probably closer to 25 with good filtration. Ideally, you would add younger fish, uh, juveniles, and then let them grow up together, let them form their hierarchy and work things out. If you're going to be adding fish, like if I were adding fish to this tank, they would be relatively small, similar to the yellow labs that you see in the center or that little red zebra, which happens to be uh, one of the leftover fry that we have. But that's about the size that I would add to a tank like this. Again, some of you may have done tried this before and said, wow, you know what, the, the smaller fish were annihilated. But for us, it, it's worked out every time that we've done it. Uh, and again, have a backup plan. I can't stress that enough when you're, when you're keeping these fish, whether it's a separate tank or being willing to go back to the pet store and say, this mix did not work for us. Uh, that will save a lot of aggravation and keep your fish alive. All right, everyone. So just a quick reminder, we have our t-shirts on sale. The link is in the description below. They're going fast. We don't have a lot of them left, but if you're interested, uh, go ahead and check out the link. Also, we are on Instagram, as I had mentioned a, a while back. So if you are on Instagram as well, check us out there. So the Mbuna Cichlids, really awesome. I know they can be challenging, but the colors and the personality more than make up for it. So if you found this useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.